Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So I've got a collective haul here. I've been purchasing some synthetic haired brushes. As you guys know, I get obsessive about stuff and I've also been wanting to, I don't know, explore the synthetic brush arena. I love my natural haired brushes, but the trend seems to be this move over into synthetics. So I just kind of wanted to educate myself. So anyway, I have a bunch of synthetic brushes to show you. I've used a couple, so I have some kind of preliminary thoughts on some of them. But if you're interested in seeing what I've picked up lately, the last portion of my Sephora VIB sale. So they gave the Rouge members a bonus weekend. So of course I had to purchase some more. So if you're interested in seeing what I've picked up lately, then just keep on watching. All right, so let's start with, um, this is probably the oldest. I've been sitting on these cause I was gonna do a dedicated video, but I only purchased three colors from the Pat McGrath Blitz Trance uh, collection. And I don't, I don't know. I don't think that would have been enough for an entire video. So anyway, I picked up uh, the Flesh Fatale and the, uh, whoa, and the Nude Romantic, a Romantique. And that came in like a little set. And then I purchased the gold one by itself. So I have the Nude one. Do I have the Nude one on? No, I have the Flesh, <laughs> such a liar. I have the Flesh one on my lips right now. So all of these um, Blitz Trance lipsticks are a pretty opaque cream lipstick. I don't want to say they're quite as thick and as opaque as like the Luxe Trance lipsticks, but they definitely have a lot more going on than the Astral ones, the ones that come in the white tube. So there's a little bit more pigmentation going on there and the glitter is pretty prominent and like the base of them have a little bit of frost. So they're really pretty, but you have to like a metallic kind of lip. So this again is the flesh. And then here is the nude, which is uh, like much pinkier, really, really pretty. And then the gold is like super gold, like a gold even I wasn't even expecting. And you guys know how much I love a gold lip product. This is so much fun. This is really for uh, an interesting look. Like if you are doing kind of like a gold finger kind of look, I think this is also really great. I've paired this with uh, some of her Lust glosses on top. So this is definitely not for the faint of heart, this gold one but it's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous, especially if you like gold, which you really have to like gold. <laughs> so that was purchased a little while ago. And then I also purchased new limited edition Rodin lip products. And I really loved the packaging and I really liked the color options that they had. So I picked up one of the lipsticks and then one of their lip and cheek oil. I feel like I'm only gonna be using this for the lip, but let's go ahead and open that up. And I got this in the color Granitum. So here is the lip oil and there are, I think those are poppies, um, if I'm not mistaken. I think those are poppies there. And this color is really beautiful. I have not tried this formula yet, but it is very, very much like an oil. It's very, very thin. It's very moisturizing. The pigmentation, it's really not meant to be long lasting at all, but it's incredibly beautiful. So that's why I picked the bright red because I knew that it was gonna be kind of like a thin formula. So I'll let you know how that uh, turns out. And then here is the lipstick. And this I got in the color Peonia. I almost said Peony, which is not it, Peonia. And check out this packaging. So usually Rodin lipsticks just come in the clear Lucite packaging, but this has this kind of like layer of the poppies on top. It's so pretty. It's still very sheer and you can still see through the case, but it's really a lot of fun. This color is very, very nude. So I have another Rodin lipstick from their regular line called, I think it's Tough Tomato and it's a really, really bright orangey red. So I thought I would try more of a nude. I was a big fan of the tough, I'm still a big fan of the tough tomato. So I have high hopes for this. We'll let you know how that works out as well. And then during that haul with the Rodin and one of the Guerlain products, I also picked up the Chantecaille Ultimate Brush Set. So I have their uh, travel size uh, face brush. I have one of their eye brushes that actually came in the palette. And it's like the most amazing eye brush that comes with a palette. I was so surprised how much I like it. And then every time I go to the Chantecaille counter, I kind of play with their brushes. Anyway, I've always been enamored with their brushes and I thought, let me go ahead and get this brush set because it's a pretty decent deal. There are five brushes in here, a really nice looking case. And since I do travel a lot, I think these come in really handy. So this is what the case looks like. It's like a faux leather 
It has the Shantakai logo there. And then it opens up like so. And there's the five brushes. And then a little zip opening for the case. And I think it goes basically behind the brushes. You can store some things. So it comes with, let's see, comes with a cheek brush. That is the biggest brush here. Really beautiful. I love the way their bristles feel. They're they're really soft, but almost like the La Mer powder brush. Like they're really soft, but not, you know, like my issue sometimes with synthetic brushes is that they're so soft, they're like, like there's no life in them at all. I don't get that feeling with these. So I'm really, really excited to try these. Where are these made? I think they're made in China. Yes, these are made in China. The next is a foundation slash mask brush. And this actually looks like the size of my favorite concealer brush from Trish McAvoy. But I really like this shape. This is just such a great um, size for like cream products. If you want to do a cream blush, if you want to do a cream highlight foundation, it really gets like right around your, your nose. If you want to kind of pat in concealer, this is just a wonderful, wonderful size. And actually when I saw this brush is sort of what convinced me to just get the whole set. <laughs> so I'm excited to give that brush a shot. And then this one is the concealer brush and, oh, this is a really, this is a large concealer brush. That's nice because I do sometimes find concealer brushes to be too small. So excited to give that a shot. Typical kind of like flat paddle brush. And then next we have an eye definer brush, they call this. This looks like a nice kind of shader brush. I'm like still obsessively on the hunt for the perfect kind of blending brush because I love the Tom Ford number 13 brush so much. So the Tom Ford number 13 brush I find is a little bit shorter than most blending brushes and it's also very domed. So there's no point to it or whatever. And then see how fluffy it is? So this Chantecaille, actually it's the same, looks to be the same length. It doesn't look quite as fluffy, but who knows? It may fluff out a bit once I use it, but it's also like a little bit, I don't know if you guys can see, it's a little bit pointier than the Tom Ford and that I'm not a fan of, but I am excited <laughs> that the brush length is a little bit shorter. So that is very promising. And then the last one in here is an eyeliner brush, which I do use. Very nice, very flat. The bristles are very firm, which is nice, but they're very soft. So that is the Shantikai Ultimate Brush Set. I'm really, really excited to give that a shot. I just wanna get out of the way the things that I did not buy at Sephora. Oh, I talked about this in my luxury lipstick like roundup video. Um, it's a newish brand called La Bouche Rouge and uh, they have beautiful, beautiful leather cases for their refillable lipsticks. And they only had the color black uh, when they launched the line. But for the holidays, they came out with limited edition colors, which I had mentioned, there's four of them. And I had to go and get the red. I think it's the holidays. I just, and I needed some more cases because I have four refills in only one case. So here is the red case. And I have, yeah, I have mine. I was just using this. And here is the one that I talked about in my uh, luxury lipstick video. So this is the one that I got engraved in New York. This is the original black color. And here is the red. So the next time I go to New York, which is in January, I'm going to take this and bring it to the Barneys on Madison Ave and get it engraved. And then I placed a fairly big brush order on Hakuhodo. That's the Japanese brush maker, but they do have a line of synthetic hair brushes and they're the ones that make the Tom Ford brushes. So when Tom Ford went synthetic, I thought, well, maybe I should just try the Hakuhodo ones and see how they are. I purchased one, two, three, I purchased six brushes and I've used a couple of them so far. So I've got the um, I-142. And if you're familiar with Hakuhodo brushes, the number, if you see this 142 number like in a different line of theirs, like in the J line or the S line, it's gonna be the same brush shape. It's just gonna be a little different, whether it's like the making of the brush, if it's the bristles, things like that. And this is uh, one of those blending brushes where the bristles are much skinnier than like my ideal Tom Ford here. So I feel like when I use this, it does a lot of like flinging 
and I don't like that. I want it to just kind of go back and forth and I feel like this one flings a little bit. I, I just have to get used to it. I've only used it once and then it has that little bit of, of a point there. I just wish it was just kind of domed like smoothly instead of it kind of coming to this little point here. So anyway, um, I also picked up the I 5523 brush. This is one of my favorite Hakuhodo shapes. It's just like a flat shader and I love using this to kind of deepen my outer corner up and this one is fine. Again, I don't I don't like it as much as my natural hair, but it's okay. I think it's, you know, it's just a matter of getting used to it. So um, so that's the 5523. And then I got the 004, and this is another flat shader, but it is much shorter, wider, and this is great. It kind of mimics like a fingertip. So I like this for kind of like all over the lid. Very handy for that. And then I purchased three more that I haven't used yet. They're still in the wrappers. So this one I thought was really interesting because this is kind of like a buffing brush. This is the I-125. So this is completely round ferrule. Uh, so it's almost like a kabuki brush, like a super teeny tiny kabuki brush uh, that's angled. So I thought this would be really nice to help kind of blend out if I really want to do just a, maybe like a one shadow smoky look. I thought that this could come in handy. We'll see, I've never used an eye brush quite this shape, so I was intrigued. And then I also picked up, um, there's so many, there's letters and numbers in here. This is the IS04A. So this is a really firm brush that I thought would be really great for lining. Or smudging out so that is the s04a and then the last one I picked up is s05 so this is kind of like an old-school crease brush I don't feel like I see people call these crease brushes anymore but I did back in the day and if you kind of have like deep set eyes this is great it kind of gets right in like above your eyeball below your brow bone I don't really have that structure to my face obviously, um, but I like these quote unquote crease brushes for applying shadow to my lash line. Um, it's also great for like inner corner. Uh, so anyway, I thought I would pick this up. All right, so that's what I picked up at Hakuhodo. I think the rest is stuff that I picked up at Sephora. So let's get into that. Since we've been talking about brushes, let's just continue on. So when I had asked you guys for synthetic haired brush recommendations a bunch of you mentioned sephora pro and i've only used maybe one or two of their brushes before they were okay but i just never think to use them anyway i decided to pick up their pro featherweight crease brush it's number 38 and again i was looking for that kind of tom ford shape it looks as fluffy but the bristles are definitely longer see if they just made them a little bit shorter i feel like i'd have a little bit more control We'll see, but other than that, I like the doming. It doesn't point, so this is actually very, very promising. And then I picked up the Fenty Beauty tapered blending brush because this looked short. So uh, it's number 210. Here's, oh, look how pretty this brush is. It's like a nice kind of dusty nude mauve color. Wow, this plastic cover is very tight. So these bristles definitely do look shorter but I think because they were in this plastic uh, casing, it like flattened them out. So I can't really tell the shape, but it looks domed. It looks like the same length as this Tom Ford. This is very promising. All right, Fenty Beauty. High hopes, high hopes for this. And then finally, I got my hands on the new Surat Beauty Perfectionist Complexion Brush. So this is the brush they came out with uh, to go with these uh, concealer palettes and I've been holding off doing uh, my dedicated video to these waiting for this brush to arrive so I'm glad it did I purchased the Surratt concealer brush thinking if this one doesn't come into stock soon I'm just going to go ahead and use that but this one popped up on Sephora and I'm so glad because I could take advantage of the 20% off so let's take a look at this brush oh wow it's very pointy it's flat, but not too flat. So I, it's definitely very different from the concealer brush. Where is the concealer brush? Here is the concealer brush. Much more typical, you know, flat paddle shape there. So this is gonna be interesting. This is uh, a bit bigger than this concealer brush. And you guys know I like a concealer brush that is a little bit on the bigger side. So I'm excited to try this. So I'll probably film this Surat video tomorrow when I can do kind of like a full day wear test. 
And then while I was on Sephora and like doing a brush search, I came across these two brushes, but they are not synthetic haired. I believe these are both natural haired. So these are two Kevin Aquan brushes and they are both made in China. Uh, one is a soft buff brush and this one kind of reminded me of my beloved Sonia G Face One brush. So I have this out, we can do a little comparison. I'm always impressed with these uh, Kevin Aquan handles. They're so massive and just so cool looking. They're like a clear acrylic around a deeper color. So it's just, it's really neat. You know what's interesting is, so this ferrule, I don't know if you can see that on the Kevin Aquan, see how it comes in? That's usually to make the bristles much denser and the Sonia G doesn't do that. I think it's because there's a lot more hairs in the Sonia G so they don't need to. And this one, they're probably kind of forcing whatever hairs they have to kind of come in. I'm excited for this. These bristles though don't look totally flat. They're very soft. I don't think they're as soft as the Sonia G. So yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to use this, try this out as a finishing powder brush because I use this all the time. And because I'm using it all the time, I just rarely have a chance to wash it. So anyway, I have to wash this brush. So I thought I would get another one. And then I also thought I would try the Kevin Aucoin loose powder brush because you can never have enough powder brushes. God, these must've been in the packaging a long time. The like cellophane kind of bit into this one. So, so yeah, so if I remember correctly, the website said that these were natural haired brushes. I'm assuming these are both goat. I'm not sure though, because I don't think they were specific on the site. Uh, if any of you guys know, please let us know down below in the comment section. This definitely looks like natural hair. So um, I bet this is undyed goat, and then this is dyed goat, is my guess. Ooh, that's nice. Nice and fluffy. Definitely not the softest I've felt in the world, but I don't need, I've said this before, I don't need like the world's softest brush. I'm okay so long as it does its job. But that's nice. This actually could be really nice for buffing too. All right, those are all the brushes that I've purchased. God, that's a lot of brushes. I have a lot of brushes to play around with. So I purchased two more makeup items, totally random. I, I don't even know what, what it was that caught my eye, but the Pat McGrath Permagel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil in Blitz Blue. So I have all of her colors except for this one. So I thought, you know what? I have been wearing more colored eyeliner, so why not get this one? So here is Blitz Blue Eyeliner. I also, when I saw it in store, it wasn't as bright as they make it look on Sephora, like the little swatch they have makes it look like it's gonna be this bright cobalt blue, which, I'm not necessarily opposed to, but I think that's why I, I never ended up purchasing it. But this is definitely much more of like a midnight, like a bright midnight blue. So I am excited to have this one. And then last but not least, this was totally random, but I picked up the Givenchy Prism Libre in, is there a color? Number five, Satin Blanc. And it just looked really pretty. I've never tried uh, one of these Givenchy powders. It's the one that has like the four chambers and I don't even know how you're supposed to mix it together. Oh, but look, look at the packaging. So it's like a limited edition, I think holiday powder. And so there's supposed to be a little bit of radiance and here's a little puff. Oh, it's sealed. I'm going to keep it sealed so I can hold it up like this for you. But those are the four colors. I feel like I was watching Tar Babies and she had one of these powders, not this one, and she found it very difficult to kind of get like an equal amount of each powder, but she liked the powder. So I'm excited to try this. I am trying to figure out if it is radiant or not. I think I will just have to get back to you on that because I don't feel like opening this up right now. It just makes such a mess. So yeah, it's matte finish and enhanced radiance loose powder. So I wonder if like two of these are matte and two of these have radiance, like two of the powders in here. I don't know, we'll have to see. So that is it for this collective haul. I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely wanna report back on these synthetic brushes. Keep an eye out for, I think I'll probably end up doing one video kind of dedicated to a bunch of the synthetic brushes that I've picked up lately and how I think they perform. So subscribe down below, uh, definitely if you're interested in that uh, or if you've been liking my content and uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. I will see you in my next video.